Welcome to the final tutorial in this series for now. Of the date of this recording, Unreal Engine 5's full release has been, well, released. So we're probably going to do another series in Unreal Engine 5 in the future. However, most of this stuff should translate to Unreal Engine 5 anyway. Let's get started because we have a lot to finish up with today. Down in user interface, hop into utility mission slot. You should have something that looks kind of like this and it's not great when we actually get into the missions because this box overlays. So let's make this look a little better. Come up to utility underscore mission slot, come up to the top right instead of fill screen, let's go custom. And I've already punched in these values here. So punching 300 in the width and 50 in the height. And then with the overlay, expand the horizontal alignment and vertical alignment to fill. Then with mission name selected, make sure that you've got horizontally aligned center and vertically aligned center. Now with the check-in box, we haven't actually binded that. With that selected, come up to binding and select turn in, which means that that should be checked or unchecked depending on whether the mission is turned in. And we'll compile and save that. So it doesn't look like much now, but those are the details that we'll need to adjust to make it look better in the menu. Which brings me on to the next thing I'd like to do today. Back over to the test map. Let's come over to menu underscore missions, where a lot of our work is going to happen today. Remember that I said that out of this branch, we were going to pretty much duplicate this script so that we could fill our completed array similarly. Well, I've come up with a better system since that. What we're going to do is with the branch coming out of condition not complete, let's get rid of that branch. We don't need that anymore. We're going to do a different type of check. We'll get rid of not as well, and we'll get rid of that complete pin there as well. Come over to the other break S mission. Let's select the complete pin here because we're going to do something here with it. I'm going to move this event out of the way so we have a little bit more room. So here's what I've come up with. Out of the add child, drag out of target and type in select. Then out of this select, we're going to grab complete from break S mission and plug that into the index. Then we're going to plug false down here on the second select into the return value of the first select. So if the mission isn't completed, then we're going to select out of our primary, secondary and optional missions. If the mission is completed, then let's go and control drag our completed missions onto true. The other thing we need to account for is our get all children here. Instead of that get all children pulling from this select, we wanna pull from this select. So the very end of this tutorial is going to be filling in the button clicked, but I wanna do something else a little more simple just to get us started for today. Come over to test, scroll up to blueprints, into NPCs, open up NPC Mission Giver. And what I'd like to do is add a section where we can get a reward. So the next set of pins should only appear if the mission has been completed. Add a pin here and we'll drag out of this and type in select. And then out of that select, we will grab ourselves the completed Boolean here. So if the mission isn't completed, then we'll do nothing. But if the mission is completed, then let's drag out of this and type in append again. And with this append, we'll put it on a new line, add the value of $1,000, another line, holding shift, pressing enter, and then we'll add 1000 XP. So now when we complete a mission, that should appear on the screen. However, we also need to set those values as well. So let's get our hero reference. And out of our hero reference, let's set currency. Copy that hero reference over again and type in calculate experience. So currency is pretty simple. We're just gonna get currency. And then dragging out of that, add a plus sign, integer plus integer. This is a throwback. Plug that in there so it looks like get currency plus set currency. And then we'll grab our value of, let's say, a thousand points gained. Let's type in 1000, remembering that the calculation should happen inside our reference hero inside that function. And you could even make a function for calculate currency if you'd like. And then both of these need to be inside this chain, but 
they should only be firing off if we've completed a mission. In this case, because we've got this mission notify firing off and we're subtracting it over here, in this case, I would suggest grabbing ourselves a reroutable out of this. So we'll grab a branch, plug that into completed. We'll put all of this before the remove index script. So we'll do currency first out of the play and notify. And then we'll punch in calculate experience after that. But of course, we don't want to do any of this if we haven't actually finished a mission. So grabbing all this script here, let's make some more room, get that branch up there. And then if we have completed the mission, we'll fire this out of true. And if not, we'll grab our false Boolean here and plug that into remove index and make that a reroutable there. You might be asking, what if I wanted to give something that wasn't a thousand experience or a thousand currency? Well, in that case, I would suggest inside your mission struct over here, adding the reward values. So if we compile and save that and come over to our test map, we'll test that in just a moment, but come down to structures and open up S underscore mission. And if you were to add more values here, such as reward experience and reward currency, then you could pull them off there. And I would do that for you if we weren't going to seriously run out of time. And I really want to get this menu up and running for you. So let's just give that a very quick test now. We're going to test completing a mission. So we're going to kill our enemy here. Then we'll speak to this NPC. He's going to say completed prior because we just completed the mission for him. And you can see we have a thousand dollars and a thousand XP. We actually got our level up in the top left with our print string. You can see at the very top, we're actually level one now above our experience bar. And if I press I, you can see our level. And if I hop out of that menu and I speak to this NPC, you can see we have a thousand dollars now. Now let's get into the final bit of this menu. So this button here is what fires when we select a mission. Basically it needs to give us a description. So we'll need a hero reference. Hero reference. We'll need to get missions. We'll need to get out of get missions and then plug in button clicked into the getter here. So out of that getter, we want to break so we can refer to the specific values of a mission. And this time we're going to come to description. So now we need somewhere to put this description. Let's come over to the designer and I've already minimized my vertical box, but let's grab the border background blur and vertical box. And if we copy that and paste it back onto the canvas panel, we're going to end up with a duplicate of the entire menu. We don't need that. All we need to do is get rid of this vertical box, grab the border and zero it out on the X and Y. So it should cover the entire menu. Then let's go and get ourselves a button and drag that button on top of the background blur. We will name this button description. With our button description, we will do the usual zero out the background color and then we'll get ourselves a rich text block drag that on top of the button and we will grab ourselves the D standard text style. Justification we'll put in the middle. Now we'll name this rich text block RTB underscore description. Back over to the graph. Let's drag in RTB description and drag out of that set text. And the text we want to set inside of that is our description. Now let's go and put a description in one of our missions. We'll compile and save that. Come over to the test map and our missions are coming from our mission data sheet. So D underscore missions. So here, if we select description, let's drag that tab to the top. We can type in a description. This is the first story mission. And when we save that, it will appear there. I'll fill out a few more of these. just so we know that we're getting the right story mission prompt. So with that saved, we'll come back over to the missions, knowing that that's going to fire off. Let's go over to 
the background description button, scroll down to the bottom of that button and select on clicked. So when this button is clicked, we'll just drag it over here because it's relevant to this script here. We want to do a few things. Firstly, we need to hide and unhide this border. So back over to the graph, add a variable. It's going to be called description visibility, or you could call it description viz. We'll hit the drop down E underscore viz, E slate visibility. That's the type of variable it is. Compile, save. And the default value we want is hidden. So come over to the designer, grab this border, and with this border's visibility, we will bind that to description visibility. Over to the graph, Alt drag out description visibility. And when we select this button, we wanna make it visible. But then when we click on the mission itself, we want to make it hidden again so we can see the missions again. Now, the next problem we'll have is focusing on the correct mission because our focus needs to be first set on this button. So let's go and get a set focus. Over here, I'll just copy user focus, or you can punch it in brand new if you'd like. So we'll set user focus, get a player controller, and drag in button description. So we want to set the focus so we can actually select the button. But if we select this button now, where do we set the focus once we're done there? We need to set the focus back on the button we already had. So how do we do that? We save the button that we are focused on just before we go into this menu. So before the script fires off, let's get a for each loop. And luckily we've already created an array for all of these buttons. Let's grab all widget children, chuck it into the for each loop. And all we want to know is the same question up here that we have in our event tick. After we cast to the button, we check if it has any focus. We'll grab that branch as well. You could have potentially copied the 4-H loop and the all-widget children, but that's all right. So basically, we fire off that similar script, except this time, instead of setting the background color, we save that value. So let's create a variable out of that. We'll drag out of button 0, type in variable, and we'll promote that to a variable. And that variable will be selected mission. So let's put the script in. And remember, we have to do it before we set focus on the new button. Otherwise, the new button will be what this array picks up. Or rather, it won't pick up anything because we haven't actually put the description button in the array. So then we get selected mission, our brand new variable. And we plug that in there in set user focus. One more thing, as I was setting this up, I noticed that the button clicked didn't always come out with the right number. So mission index should be set in there, but it doesn't always come out correct. I'm not entirely sure why that is. I will probably have to figure that out at some point, but the quick fix for that is when you come out of button clicked, subtract one from there. So what was happening is when I was selecting mission three, it was coming up as mission four. I will have to solve that at some point. And if I do solve it, anytime soon, I will pin it in the comments. I'm just gonna move all of this over so that it's close to the rest of everything. But for now, just so we can get this video out on time, we'll just put that subtractor in. So with that done, let's go and test the final bit of script for this tutorial for now. Come over to the test map, hit play. We're going to walk up to this NPC. Let's speak to him. He's gonna give us the mission. And then if we go over to our menu, and I'm not going to use my mouse, pretending that I'm using a gamepad, I'm going to use just the keys on my keyboard and press I, come down to missions, select missions. When I select story mission three, it said this is the third story mission. Then when I press enter again, it's gonna select story mission three again. So the focus is coming back. Then I can go down to back and down to back again, and I'm back in the game. So gamepad support is working. We're pretty much good to go. This is the end of this tutorial series for now. Thank you if you have made it this far for coming with me along the journey. I hope that you've learned a lot in these tutorials. So here's hoping at some time in the future, you either see another tutorial from me in Unreal Engine 5, or maybe even a game. Who knows what the future holds? Thank you again, and I will see you guys somewhere in the future. All the best.